to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review, and we may or may not have good internet right now. I don't know. Nanook's at the door. He might cry. Wife's out in the other room working out, so he can't because, you know, if you have a four-month-old 50-pound puppy out there while you're working out, it's almost like doing goat yoga, and you don't want to be doing goat yoga. Trust, trust me on this one. You do not want to be doing goat yoga. So, you may hear him cry once in a while. I'm just, uh... Editing the position of the camera a little bit. There we go. That's great. We have two beers today. We have two beers. Two beers. Again, hopefully the internet is not horrendous. Two beers. The two beers today. One is from the Common Good Beer People. Uh, well, Common Good Beer Company. This is Star Appeal Dark Lager with Tangerine Peel and Star Anise. So this guy is 5% uh, alcohol, 20 IBU. It's water, barley malt, tangerine peel, star anise, hops, and yeast. It does have a uh, spiel there, but we're not going to read it. Um, is this Who is this made with? Oh, the Society of Beer Drinking Ladies is who made this one with them. Um, the other beer we have to look at is from Hometown Brew Co. This is Organic Wild Wheat. So Organic Wild Wheat is 6% alcohol by volume. Um, certified organic by CSI, something or other. There's a Canadian flag and stuff in there. Blind guy, can't read it. So, uh, these came with the Amazing Club, the Amazing Club's, uh, beer box. So, awesome, I got some beer to try. Let's do this, shall we? Let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's start with the wheat. So organic wild wheat at 6% alcohol. Okay, I did that shake just in case there was a bunch of sediment at the bottom, but there really wasn't. Um, little hazy, bright gold color, lots of bright white head, baiting fast, huge snap, crackle, pop, huge scent. Uh, you know what, pretty, pretty nonchalant beer smell, to be honest. Like... Just beer. It's just beer. It smells like beer. Can't say anything else. It smells like beer. Let's try it. Cheers. And she's doing the stare part. This Guinness glass, I didn't have any beer glasses when we came up here. This came up out of a Marche Turin order. It was really, really, really excited when they sent me this that was a great thing i was so excited uh love your glasses got rid of so many of them when we were down south before we came up here to the arctic you okay nanook yeah you're doing good okay um tastes like beer just tastes like beer i mean there's nothing special about this in the fact that there is nothing to write home about it. There is nothing wrong with it though. It is a perfectly acceptable beer. Um, would I think a wheat beer when I'm drinking it? Not really, I didn't even read it to see if they were putting anything different in it. But when I think a wheat beer, just seeing organic wild wheat, I don't I don't know what I would think with wild, maybe the wild yeast. Um, but, oh, there's nothing even on here. It's just organic wild wheat. Uh, when I see wheat, I expect First off, a little cloudier, but that's okay. I don't care about that all that much. I expect a little bit of banana flavor, a little, possibly a bit of clove, uh, possibly a dryness, possibly a heavier mouth feel. I don't really get any of that. It's just... It's beer. I mean, it has a little bit of almost a spiciness like a rye would have. It does dry out and become slightly biscuity on the back end. But 
it kind of reminds me of a very mild APA because it almost has that, almost has that like woodiness to it. Uh, like old APAs or Ontario pale ales that, which, you know, were the old style American pale ales, that kind of coppery, um, coppery woody flavor. That's kind of what I'm getting off this. It's not a bad beer. I mean, for a guy that has to pay $130 for a 12, uh, for a 2.4 of Bud, uh, this is very refreshing. Out of 10, a six, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I would drink it. Excuse me. It's fine. Next beer. Next beer is from the Common Good Beer People. It's Star Appeal. So Star Appeal is 5% alcohol by volume. 20 IBU, we already had this conversation, right? Um, it's a supporter of the Canadian Women's Foundation. Water, barley malt, tangerine peel, star anise, hops, and yeast. I'm going to go into this saying I probably wouldn't normally have bought this beer um, if I was buying from the LCB or anything other than to just try it. If this didn't come in my beer case, I probably would have never tried it because I'm not a big star anise fan. I don't like uh, I don't like black licorice, so I don't know how I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this. The tangerine might might help mellow it out. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's pop her open. Oh yeah, that sounded good. I see we do have viewers. Hopefully you guys can tell me how bad the internet is. The internet was good when we did our cookie review, I was told. Um, again, internet's hit or miss. We are on HDMI, well, sorry, we're on fiber optic to the satellite. So there is one giant satellite dish for the entire community. Uh, we, what we used to be on when, when the internet was the worst was the giant satellite dish and then we'd have a little, almost uh, a receiver at your house that would receive the signal from the satellite dish. Uh, now what we have is fiber optic running from the satellite dish to each house, but you're still just all running off that same satellite dish. So mattering how many people are using it matters how bad it is. So deep mahogany brown, slightly off white head, it faded pretty quickly. Brave. Go do something else. You're not supposed to be on the internet so the internet isn't slow. I said, please don't play on the internet while I do my video. And you said, okay. And now you're watching it. And good day to you, Mr. or Mrs. Talks. Let's try this. Well, let's sniff her out first, eh? Okay. It does have that black licorice scent, which does very much worry me. Like I said, if I had lived in the South still and could pick my own beer, sorry guys, just editing the camera a little bit. If I lived in the South and could pick any beer, I wouldn't have picked this solely because of the, because of the star anise. Um, so still a little scared because the black licorice is the forefront of this. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of burnt wood. Let's try it. Cheers. So I know a lot of the girls from the society, well, a lot of the women from the Society of Beer Drinking Ladies, all really, really awesome people. All, uh, all of them know how to do their brewing. Common good beer knows how to do good beer. Um, this isn't for me, but I kind of knew it wasn't going to be for me going into this. Don't get a flavor from the tangerine, but you get that just kind of oiliness because it is tangerine peel. You get that oily, viscous, mouth coating and it helps spread the flavor out around your mouth 
The problem is the major flavors I'm getting on this is black licorice and charred wood. I don't mind charred wood. I love I love me some cigars. I love me I love me my stouts and stuff. But black licorice I hate with a passion. So you mix that black licorice in with uh, with charred wood and a viscous mouth coating of oily tangerine peel, and it's just not for me. It really isn't. Um, it was great to try. It really was. Uh, a co-worker, I'm going to share the next one with a co-worker. i got to get close to anyone that doesn't know I am legally blind. got to get close to read what you guys are saying here. I saw a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, as soon as I said, said that I realized who you were, the one with the unicorn dildo on your head, uh, and pointing to the, uh, that I thought actually had the little, I thought the thumbnail was, was part of your camera. But it was it was GSH, GSHL TV stuff. And how are you doing? I really like my shirt too. Al, how are you? Well, that's just it, John. Um, if you like black licorice, great beer for you. Uh, do I like black licorice? No. I understand the tangerine peel. I understand the flavors they were trying to go for. Not really my thing, which is which is perfectly fine. And yes, Al, I'm doing great. How is Niagara, Al? I kind of miss Niagara, to be honest. Uh, well, some things about Niagara. Not everything, but some things. Let's, uh, let's just get rid of this cup now, right? Let's just do it. Not mean to have any of that go down my face, but my God, do I hate black licorice. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Um, I am doing real well. And the fact the internet's working right now uh, does, sorry, I didn't realize how low I'd go if I sat on the corner of the bed. Uh, the fact that the internet's working right now really, really has me hoping that it'll still be working tomorrow and the next day and the next day. I don't know if it's because two of the other managers left, my neighbors, and maybe we're running on the same fiber optic cable as them and all they did was sit at home watching fucking Netflix every day, but they're gone now and my internet seems to be working and my dog's crying. What's up? Come here, Nanook. Come on, baby. Come on, Nanook. Oh, what a good boy. What a good boy, Nanook. Tama. Tama. Yeah. Teach him a little bit in English and a little bit in Nanook. Okay, guys, sorry, just quickly reading what's uh, going on here. John, um, you really should be scared if somebody from Welland liked your profile. You should be scared, especially since you're down in um, down in Pennsylvania. It's something to really be scared of. Uh, Miss Talks. Yeah, um, yeah, I can I can make stuff disappear pretty well. Actually, let's uh, let's make the rest of the let's do a mixture too. Let's see if we can make this taste any better. It's gonna taste worse. So there's the rest of the star appeal. The first beer from the night, the organic wild. We'll mix the two of them. We'll let that head die down. We'll put this over here and we'll finish uh, We'll finish the comments. Then we'll chug that down and see how that goes. Um, yeah. I was, I was telling the wife I was going to shave the Santa beard and get rid of it. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. Um, what's going on here? So one second. Uh, yeah, uh, Greg was Greg was here yesterday, actually, Al. He was here yesterday, and he's doing good. Maybe it would make a good Smirnoff Rocket. You are correct. For those of you that don't know, Smirnoff Rocket was, uh, 
was making half beer, half Smirnoff. Best Smirnoff rocket we ever made was Guinness and Smirnoff ice. Uh, Guinness and Smirnoff ice, fucking fantastic. Um, Al, Nanook is King Shepherd and Husky. So he is like a monkey on crack. He is legitimately like a monkey on crack because the King Shepherd in him wants your attention and he wants your attention and he wants to be loyal and he wants your attention but the husky in him is like no fuck you so it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god pet me pet me pet me fuck you i don't want to do anything oh my god oh my god oh my god i gotta be right near you oh i'm done so uh that's that's him in a nutshell we got him at four weeks old uh heads almost died down so we'll get to the beer in a second got him at four weeks old he was shipped here from umeric so a 45 minute plane ride uh, rescued him because you don't want a dog to die and there's lots of dogs that just die up here. Uh, up here, it is said if a dog makes it to a year, it's amazing. Um, our, we're getting another puppy tomorrow. This puppy's five weeks old. It's from here locally. We are rescuing it from a, uh, from a dog sled breeder. It's not good enough to be one of his dog sled dogs. So he's going to be not keeping it. So we're taking it before it just is not kept. Uh, he is part Malamut, but, and part wolf, but mostly husky. Why are you crying now? Mommy will let you out soon. You're okay. You're here with daddy. You love daddy. You love daddy more than anybody else. I'm sorry I'm not paying attention to you. I love you. Fuck a dog. Yeah, stubborn energy. Um, one of the guys I do, one of my employees has been making fun of me. He's like, you should get sled dogs. You can train dogs so well. You should make a sled dog team. And I'm like, if I made a sled dog team and our sled dog team won, the shit that would hit the fan that my sled dog team won. So no, we're not even going to try that. Not that I actually think I would be good enough to teach a sled dog. I can train a dog really well can't train a sled dog. I don't know how to train a sled dog. I don't... Um, the joke right now, though, is he's so pure energy. If, it, if the snow hadn't started melting, we would have put, you know, tied... Well, done... You know, the guys that bike around and their dog runs beside their bike? Get on the skidoo and skidoo down the streets and have him follow me. Uh, no, we had to get rid of Boris. But, uh, you can't fly. So here's what happened, right? As you, most of you know, I rescued Colleen. Colleen was the Great Pyrenees. Colleen was never meant to stay with me. I just rescued, rescued her so she, she didn't... Come here. Come here, baby. I just rescued her so she didn't go to the Humane Society. Uh, Alicia's parents have her. Alicia's parents always wanted a Great Pyrenees. I had a Great Pyrenees, so things went great. I get to see her all the time. Um, Boris, they, they won't fly boxers. So Boris was... Boris was over and out, um, sadly. I love Boris. Boris was my baby. I miss him so much get weekly pictures from him doing great my rottweiler marley had cancer she had to get put down um our puppy sasha the uh the king shepherd we had we didn't end up bringing her with us because she was very uh she was very dog skittish she loved people hated dogs there is five dogs to one person up here right you have you have the uh, wild dogs you have the highland dogs you have all the dogs people have and none of them are chained up. They all run free. So we we just thought it was better to leave her down south too. Um, hey, Nanook. Nanook, is, Nanook was born on New Year Day. So he's four and a half months old. He's a good boy. Mwah. Oh, yeah, my baby. Okay. Let's get this beer. Okay, so first and foremost, it did lighten up. It's more reddish now than brown. <laughs> that does not smell good. Let's try it. Cheers. Actually... 
That took the star anise taste out of it. You still have the viscous uh, oiliness from the tangerine peel, but the star anise is gone. So now it just tastes like a viscous, oily beer. I'm okay with that. Uh, actually, I don't think I rated uh, the, the star appeal. I'd give that a three. This mixture, I'd give a five. I could, I could drink this. I could drink that. That is nice. Is the dog opal? Uh, dogs are Mumeric. Mumeric is the next hound down from us. So he is, uh, he's from an Inuk family that brought a King Shepherd up with them and had a Husky anyway, and they bred the Husky and King Shepherd. Um, and like I said, the dog I'm rescuing from Charlie, Charlie's bringing him to me tomorrow, um, is Wolf, Malmut, and uh, Wolf, Malmut, and Husky. Uh, and he's brown. Uh, my favorite dog in this entire town is this golden Husky named Amarok. Amarok means wolf. Amarok is my baby. Amarok loves me. Amarok follows me everywhere. You, you can see pictures of Amarok on my Instagram and stuff. Amarok has a posse of red Huskies that follow him. And they don't love me as much as him, but they, they still like me. Uh, I have been told by all the locals I am the only person that has so far been able to pet Amarok's belly, like rub his belly, he'll roll over and submit to me. Uh, Amarok protects my house. Uh, there's these dogs that Braith calls the cow dogs, and they're these white dogs with black spots, and they're, they're aggressive towards my dog and stuff. And Amarok will see my dog outside, and he will come, and he will sit on my steps, and he'll protect my dog from those dogs the entire time my dog wants to be outside playing. If I'm walking my dog and he sees me, he runs up, he gets pet, all that, he gets his love, and then he stays about 15 feet ahead of us and chases away any dog that comes near us. Uh, then he'll follow us all the way to my house. Come here, baby. Come here. And he'll sit on my steps for about two hours. He has sat on my skidoo and protected my skidoo from people. He's, hey, baby. He's, you gonna go see mommy? Wanna go see mommy? Look, the door's open. The door's open, you can go. <laughs> Um, so he has protected me, he's protected my property, he sat outside my house for up to six hours, and the second he sees me, he charges right for me, and even, even his owner can't call him back if he sees me, he'll charge right to me. I want that dog, I love that dog. No, there's no such thing as beer, local beer here. No, somebody does own that dog. Um, he is wearing a collar. Uh, the red dogs, I don't know if they're Highland dogs or if they're local as well, the ones that are with him. The red dogs don't have collars. Um, most dogs, if they're owned, will have a collar on because what happens up here is the dog catchers will catch the dogs. And if the dogs don't have collars, well, the dogs get shot. So <laughs> you want a dog to stay alive, you put a collar on it. And if there is too many dogs, like all the Highland dogs are out and the wild dogs are out and everything like that, any dog, be it collared or not, will, will end up getting shot. Um, to help control the population and control the town and people don't get mauled type of thing. Uh, the white, the white dogs, the cow dogs, they are completely wild and they are not nice dogs. Very not nice dogs. There's a couple not nice dogs. I've, I've seen a wolf in town that my daughter thought was a dog and I'm like, don't pet that. Why? Because it ain't no dog. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Hello, Keith, how are you? Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to go watch a movie with the kids and the wife. Like I said, uh, we will try, we'll try, if the internet keeps up like this, if the internet keeps working, um, I might do a review tomorrow, 
And then I'm off Sunday, Monday. So maybe Sunday night or Monday night, we can try and do a hangout if people are interested and only if my internet works. Um, but I'll try and do a hangout. Everybody's free to join. Come chat. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to like it used to be. Um, we'll try at least. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Au revoir. Au bientôt. Um, uh, oh, to answer that question, how is coronavirus where I am? Uh, we are in a place where you can't drive to. We are in a place there's no roads, no train tracks, everything's by plane. Uh, Nunavik has 14 communities. Uh, back in March, back in March, the furthest north community, uh, Salowit, ended up getting a case of coronavirus. Now, to get to Salowit, you either had to pass through Kujawak or pass through Pavernatuk. The two hubs were in Pavernatuk, Kujawak is the other... other the other coast, right? The two coasts of of the of northern Canada. Um, so, well, of this part of nor northern Canada, of Nunavik, not of Nunavut or, or Nunavu. Um, so you had to pass through Pavernatuk or Kujawak to get to Salowit. So one person came from Montreal and went home and ended up getting coronavirus in Montreal, went home. Um, so there was one case in Salowit. They ended up getting quarantined and recovered. About a week after they had it and recovered, uh, three cases popped up here, which brought us to four cases. Uh, over the next two weeks, another 10 cases popped up here, which brought us to 14 cases. Then another case popped up here, which brought us to 15 cases in the region. Um, and then one case out of nowhere, nobody knows how it even got there, but one case popped up in the Nukjuak. Uh, because after Salowit got their case, they shut down everything. There was no more flights. There was no more nothing. Nothing moved other than cargo because you need your cargo to get your food and everything up here. Uh, nothing moved. So they shut everything down. The grocery stores were open and the water and shit trucks were running. That's, that's basically all that was happening. So they shut everything down because of the one case in Salowit. We got our 14 cases. And after our 14 cases, which was over the span of a, a month and a half, and I'm not going to get into the socio-economics of everything, but those 14 cases were almost all related because there is a very big housing crisis in Nunavik. Uh, in all honesty, there needs to be more housing up here. And the problem is housing, all the materials have to be brought from the south. Everything has to be brought from the south. There's no trees up here. So it's not like you can cut down a tree, make some wood and make a log cabin or something. Everything's brought up from the south. So there is a big housing crunch. There's an overpopulation problem. There's tuber uh, tuberculosis problems. So it was very, very fear of this virus getting up here. So they shut everything down. We had our 14, Salut had its one, and then this one out of nowhere after months popped in Nukjuak. And nobody knows how it got there because, again, nobody was allowed to move anywhere. So they were like, how the fuck did this get here? Did somebody walk 15 days from one community to another? Like, how did it get here? Did somebody do the three-day skidoo ride and nobody saw them skidoo into town? How did this get here? So as of right now, Nunavik is down to zero. Nunavu is the only place in Canada that's ever been at zero. Nunavu is the other northern province, well, not, or northern territory. So you have uh, Northwest Territories, I believe, is at one. Nunavu is at zero. Nunavik had 16. And uh, for Arctic Canada, the, oh, oh, Yukon's at two. So Yukon's at two. Northwest Territories was one. Nunavu, 16. Uh, sorry, Nunavu, zero. Nunavik, 16. So... All of Northern Canada, all the Inuit territories, all that, almost nothing, which is good. And it only happened because everything was just locked down and done. So that was great. Uh, it's fun up here. It's it's fine. Uh, curfew is slowly leaving. Um, restrictions are slowly leaving. There's still a travel ban. I might not be going south. I might not see my kids this year. I haven't seen my kids since last September. I might not see them till sometime next year. And that's killing me, but... It is what it is, and I've resigned to the fact that I might be doing a staycation. Let me finish reading these comments, and i got to get out of here still.
Um, okay, that, that's great to hear, Al. If you are in for it, we'll we'll get you in here. And thank you, Andrew. I am doing good. And yes, TB is a big thing up here. And I mean, that's that's the thing, right, John? People brought it up here too. Well, Velvet Banana, I'm glad you enjoy that. I can't get that up here. You know what I can get up here? Budweiser at $65 a two, uh, 12 pack. Um, Molson Dry, I think 60. Keith's at $95 a 12 pack. Rickard's Red at $95 a 12 pack. And I think Canadian's available right now as well. Maybe some Coors Light, maybe, maybe. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is that is the only thing that's killing me is I might not see my kids until sometime next year. So first off, I had very bad visitation rights to begin with. And then to lose a whole year. Uh, my youngest is three. My wife left, my ex-wife left when he was a couple months old. I He still doesn't really know who daddy is. So to know that the last time I saw him, he was two, and the next time I might see him, he's four, does kill me inside. Um, and to know that the only time my ex-wife tried to work with me is when she accepted that she couldn't handle my eldest son, and that we had said that he's had no behavioral issues with us ever, and asked me if he could come up here, but asked me two weeks after other people suggested he come live with me up here. Um, and by that time, the first case of coronavirus was in Nunavik, and I lost out on him coming up here because Nunavik just shut everything down. The KRG, Makovic, and the Nunavik Health Board shut down everything. And even though he was in an abusive, really, uh, an abusive environment, in a horrible environment for him, he couldn't come up. Um, killed me, especially the fact that he just got sent to a group home instead of coming to live with his dad. Um, and now I won't see him till he's 10. That kills me. Uh, fuck. My daughter, my, my daughter is amazing and I'm not going to see her either. And thanks fuckers. Now I'm crying. I'm fucking crying. Anyway, <laughs> I gotta go. Thank you. Bye-bye.